So now we're going to just continue and re um, hop right back into our discussion on M phase. Um, and specifically in our previous video, what did we talk about? We talked about um, the first part of M phase, or the first two parts, in prophase and prometaphase. So remember the overall uh, five steps are P, P, M, A, T. We've done prophase, we've done prometaphase, now we're going to do metaphase. So metaphase is step three. It's a very simple phase and it's exactly what the name is. Metaphase, if, meta, I, if I told you meta means middle, this is simply going to be the phase at which we're going to say each chromosome moves to metaphase plate. Why are they moving to the metaphase plate? Because you need to put them at the center, the middle of the cell, so that you can equally divide them. Equally divide them to one pole and the opposite pole. So in addition, during metaphase, we can finally say that the mitotic spindle, those spindle fibers, those microtubule fibers, um, are all complete. The mitotic spindle is complete. We have finally completed that those microtubule fibers. They are absolutely ready to either be kinetic core microtubules or non-kinetic core microtubules to either attach onto the chromosomes or not. So this is the sort of take-home message of metaphase. They, these chromosomes are then now going to absolutely leave the nucleo, nucleus region because the envelope is gone. When did it leave? It left in prometaphase and go to the center, go to the metaphase plate. And then we're going to have step four occur. Step four is one of the most famous and really one of the best, uh, most like really awesome um, steps of the cell cycle because you can see this phase very, very clearly um, on, on underneath the microscope. It's really cool to see. I highly suggest looking at some of the videos in the playlist section of um, the biology playlist site and you can see anaphase actually happening very clearly. So what is anaphase? Anaphase is step four of the mitotic phases. And what happens here is specifically we focus on each sister chromatid. What about each sister chromatid? Well, each sister chromatid now is actually going to be separating. Each sister chromatid will say separates and moves to, like what we've been saying, opposite poles. They go from one, they go on one side of the cell, um, and the other one goes on the opposite side of the cell. And this is all happening via the kinetic core microtubule. They are pulled by, we'll just say the KM, kinetic core microtubule. Very simple way to draw this is if you imagine right here the cell, we're going to imagine the centrioles right here, the two right angle um, centrioles, another one right here. I'm going to draw a chromosome right in the middle. There's going to be a kinetic core and a centromere. I'm going to draw the kinetic core sort of combined right here. And then what's going to happen during anaphase is the splitting apart of this. So what we can draw, um, I'll draw it over here since I have some space, is that is sort of how metaphase sets itself up. We connect at the kinetic cores and now we're going to pull apart. How are we going to pull apart? We actually pull apart centromere first, it's called. The centromere will be pulled to that side of the cell and the other centromere will actually also be pulled to that side of the cell, all via the centrosome, all via the mitotic spindle, all via the kinetic core microtubules. So this is going to be sort of um, a way to describe this is that it goes centromere first. The centromere is the first thing that sort of um, pulls itself towards that opposite pole, just like I drew here. Notice how this, the chromosome would be sort of in this structure, that's the centromere, the centromere is pulling that way. Um, it's being pulled by this line could be represented as a kinetic core microtubule. So that's what's happening in anaphase. Um, another thing you want to know about anaphase is the idea of the separase enzyme. The separase enzyme is incredibly important. This is actually going to be the enzyme that cleaves um, the location that, that the sister chromatids are attached at. So we'll write that down. Cleaves location at which sister chromatids, SC, are attached. Because remember, the sister chromatids are exact copies, and we want to make sure that the new daughter cells get the exact copies a split exactly in half. But in order to split them, in order to split that strong centromere connection that they have, you need to use the separase enzyme, a very easily rememberable name because it's literally there to separate. Once we've done that, once we've separated each sister chromatid from each other, once we have this and this, like drawn as the, in this situation, 
we no longer have them drawn together as this X situation. They are no longer called sister chromatids. Once they are separated, they are officially back to being referred to as independent chromosomes. So we're going to write this down as each is now an independent chromosome simply because they are no longer bound by their centromere. They're no longer bound by the centromere that connected them as sister chromatids. They have separated because of the separase enzyme um, causing the middle to sort of loosen and then we officially had the complete pulling apart by the kinetochore microtubules. In addition, I want to mention now finally the idea of chromosome movement. How do we move the chromosomes specifically? How do these microtubules work? How do they push the chromosome onto opposite, or pull, excuse me, the chromosomes onto opposite sides? How is this happening? Well, very simply, first I want to establish that the microtubules um, are not contractile. Are not contractile. And you'll see what I mean by this in just a second. I just want to establish that first. They're not contractile. They actually work in a different way. Contracting would be getting um, the idea of staying the same size, but just sort of stretching and then de-stretching. Stretching and then de-stretching. Microtubules don't do that. They actually do change size completely. They do not contract. They literally physically change the size. And this happens through the process of depolymerizing. So they, they, they depolymerize, and we talked about this. What I mean by this is that they actually dissemble those subunits. What are the subunits? Microtubules are consistent of tubulin subunits. If you break apart those subunits one by one, you are officially, what are you doing to the microtubule? The microtubule actually gets shorter. And if that microtubule gets shorter as it's being picked apart one by one by one by one as it's being depolymerized one by one by one by one you expect to see the chromosomes actually moving this actually moves the chromosomes because you're getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter as you're getting shorter you're pulling away pulling away because you start off like this and then you end up like this and then you get shorter and shorter and shorter all the way until the chromosome is finally at this very other side of the cell let's say you start off as a long microtubule then get shorter 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 all through the process of depolymerization that's how chromosomes are going to be moving and then you have to understand also um, you make sure that the uh, chromosome is held and kept held, so we keep um, the chromosome held at the centromere. Because now each chromosome also does have a new independent centromere that, does not, that is not bound with each other, and we keep hold onto that centromere. That centromere is what's going to keep the microtubule held at that chromosome. And then we obviously are going to drag to the poles, drag to the opposite poles. That's how chromosomes move during anaphase. And finally we'll finish this video by talking about telophase or telophase. This final phase is responsible for um, the point at which we're actually going to have chromosome um, decondensing. So chromosome decondenses let's say. And if we say the chromosome decondenses that means we're going back into what form? We're going from chromosome and then we're decondensing to chromatin because chromatin is the decondensed, very thread-like, unorganized structure um, of a uh, DNA genetic material. So we're going back to that structure because we're going back. We're starting a cycle. We're going back to that original phase that we started in, interphase. And this is what the cycle is all about. So we covered metaphase, anaphase, now we're on telophase. As we decontent, we actually also look what we're also going to do. We're actually uh, going to reform the nuclear envelope. So nuclear envelope um, formation. I'll actually say reformation now because now we're actually reforming the nuclear envelope because we want to put all of this genetic material into a nice safe spot since we're going to literally pinch off and develop two independent daughter cells. At the end of telophase, we have two identical, not daughter cells, but daughter nuclei. This is a very important distinction. We do not have two separate cells at the, uh, at, at the end of telophase. We only have two separate cells once we've literally split the cells. In this situation, what we have is, and I like to imagine is, as one big cell like this with two independent nuclei sort of like this. That is what telophase sort of signifies. We have two identical daughter nuclei with genetic material uh, condensed, uh, um, decondensed in that really wild chroma chromatin format. What we have to next have is the splitting of the cell right down the middle. We have to have it split like this.
And that is when we have cytokinesis. The next phase would be to begin cytokinesis, cell splitting. Okay, so telophase ends in this result. It ends in the result of two identical but separate daughter nuclei. We started with just one nucleus. Now we have two identical but separate daughter nuclei. Now we have to literally just split the cell in half, and we'll talk about that in the next video. So overall, we've now completed M phase. We've completed the mitotic. We've completed the mitosis of the M phase. Let me uh, change that. Because remember, M phase consists of mitosis and cytokinesis. So we've done mitosis. Mitosis is five parts. Prophase, which we covered, prometaphase, and in this video we covered metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Metaphase was all about aligning at the metaphase plate. Anaphase was all about separating. We use separase enzyme. We use chromosome movement to literally create two independent areas of genetic material. And then we enclose those two ind independent areas of genetic material with a new nuclear envelope. We decondense those uh, that genetic material into the chromatin format. So actually write that down. We decondense back to chromatin. And then we form two identical daughter nuclei, not daughter cells, daughter nuclei. We're going to develop those daughter cells in cytokinesis, which we'll talk about in the next video.